What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Hot Pop Boys. David and Andrew here. And, you know, on our kind of podcast show that we have here, we do often touch on some lighthearted, feel good stories or, you know, kind of try to analyze and draw something deeper from something that might seem trivial. Uh, but today we got to cover these three kind of sad and tragic uh, stories that happened recently uh, involving Asians in America. Right. And I believe they all these tragic stories, whether we're talking about Jasper Wu, uh, the woman who got attacked in the Harlem elevator or the Ph.D. student who got murdered in Chicago at the University of Chicago. They all involve first generation immigrants that uh -huh. newly arrived from America, I believe all from China, mainland uh -huh. China. Um, and we got to talk about that aspect, too. But like the last thing I wanted to do is as much as Asian Americans, we feel like our uh, wins or losses or whatever feel invisible to the mainstream American narrative. Mm. I don't want to do that same thing and make the first generation tragic um, stories or successes invisible as well. I don't want to hand it down the pecking order. And I think that sometimes that happens. That's what, you know, Jay Caspian and King is talking about in the loneliest Americans. Anyway, that's not what it's about. But um, I thought it was important that if we're going to cover, you know, the AZN and the ABGs and the Kevin wins and all this uh, fun things we have to talk about the tragic stuff too and what we can take away and what we can learn from it. Yeah. Uh, first off, I guess we could talk about um, this 36 year old Asian woman whom I believe to be is Chinese, but her name hasn't came out yet. Uh, she got attacked and robbed in a Harlem elevator. There's a video of it. There's a security cam footage. It's very disturbing the way she got attacked. She's alive, by the way. Uh, she got robbed of $50. Uh, this guy falls her into the elevator. Um, he faces up arrest. There's some type of exchange. He attacks her, punches her, and drags her out of the elevator. It's really, it looks horrible. It looks um, like a horror movie. Almost. Yeah. Like, and, and I'm sure when she's in the moment, I can't imagine what she's feeling. I'm sure she's traumatized because like she probably thinks that she's going to get killed or, you know, something of that level. Now, thankfully, she's live and she's just I mean, she has injuries. But uh, I guess uh, this just kind of just falls in line with the whole trend of Asian hate. And I know that we all thought Asian hate might take a dip at a time. And it felt like, according to the news articles, there was less attacks at a moment. And then it kind of felt like they're kind of increasing again. Yeah, Does it feel I, that way, David? I, yeah, I'm not sure if this is, how much of it is related to COVID-related hate or if there was always Asian hate because, you know, the risk exposure being in the hood, essentially. A lot of Asians or a lot of Chinese people in America, especially the lower income ones, they're in the hood. Like, they're, you know, like white people, are, for example, are not in the hood, right? Asians, yeah. Chinese are in the hood, but they're viewed as like the least powerful group in the hood yeah so that i don't know if it was just a power dynamic thing or it was the asian hate thing like specifically relating to covid or whatever like that but uh the video is terrible and um i thought actually the lady was an old lady at first just yeah. because of the jackets and stuff like that and the, the grocery cart yeah. but um as it turns out it was actually a young lady and 36, um yeah. i guess for me my whole thing is like i just hope that we don't move on in the news cycle I think it's something that you got to constantly address. I don't think that any of these things are ever like just like momentary phases, uh -huh. you know? So I, I just hope that um, as the video gets shared, people can just learn to make better reads to protect their families or, or really it probably won't be somebody who sees the video who's like educated that's really at risk because they're probably not going to be realistically in a Harlem elevator at like 12 a.m. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. But like, d just please... Uh, pass it on down. If you are involved in like a nonprofit organization, you may want to rework your, your focus to maybe providing education to people or uh, providing situational awareness training. Um, you know what I mean? To people yeah. who really are ne like never going to get it. Well, I think it's really tough in New York City. Uh, actually, there's a high amount of pop, uh, Asians in New York, and actually a lot of them uh, live underneath the poverty line. So there's actually this really big disparity between Asians in New York, especially where you have a lot of poor Asians and you do have a lot of like wealthy Asians and everything in between. Um, yeah, I mean, it's tough because uh, when I first saw it, it was terrible, and I was just like, I don't know how to stop this completely. You can always prosecute and punish the people. And I think that's why it's good that there's a security cam footage because I think they're, they're going to be able to capture this guy. Um, but um, if you know, or if you do interface with the low income Asian community, especially those who live in kind of like uh, the more higher crime neighborhoods, like, yeah, I think, I think 
if you have a way to talk to them, it, it would be nice to just remind them and, and, and ask them like, Hey, do you know how to move? Do you know how to get in, out of these situations? I'm not saying she could have gotten out of this one completely, right? Some of these are, are hard to avoid, but, um, just like uh, why and, you gotta be like, are you trying not to be out late? And, and I think it's difficult just because, um, you know, if you understand poverty for the most part in China, it's relatively safe from violent yeah. crime. I'm not saying there's not crime, but like, you know, brutal crimes like that is very, very, mm -hmm. very, very rare. So I yeah. think people are not locked into that mindset. They might freeze that mindset, come over to America, not really have the conditioning to be able to accept the new mindset. So they're keeping the old mindset that makes them very vulnerable in a much higher mm -hmm. risk environment, obviously statistically for violent crimes occurring. Yeah, definitely. I think if you have just moved here, I think uh, especially coming to a place like New York, you have to turn up your senses. You basically have to turn them up to a super high level and, and be super aware, especially when you're outside on the streets, especially at night. Yeah, I mean... Um and, and, and to speak to your point about like, why does it seem like it's spiking back up again? People may be letting their guard down or things may be reopening in the sense that like the normal flow of people is back to normal. Obviously yeah. for the last two years, the flow of people in the, in, in the public spaces or streets has been very different. Like mm -hmm. if you were to track every little dot, you know, like as a data point. Yeah. Um, point to, to case number two, Andrew, we got to talk um, about Jasper Wu, who was also the child of uh, Chinese immigrants. Um, the dad, you know, wasn't even in China, but, uh, in America, but he randomly was on the Oakland highway and he, uh, caught a stray bullet in, in gunfire being exchanged between two cars mm -hmm. and he got shot in the head and died. And, yeah. uh, there was a GoFundMe guys. And originally the first GoFundMe was fake. Somebody was trying to take money from it, but now there's a real one guys. We put the link up right here. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't even know, like this is one of those ones where you don't even have words for how tragic it is. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because I, I don't think it necessarily falls under Asian hate because I don't think he was being targeted. He's in the, sitting in the back of his car with his mom. Um, he happened to, uh, there was a shootout on that highway, but I think that highway I heard has a lot of shootouts. Right, it's known as a, a uh, you know, Oakland is a wild place. It is known for being high in violent crime. Yeah. Like, and, uh, it's a fact, I mean. Yeah, and if you're wondering why like places that are so diverse with so many Asians and different types of people in the same neighborhood that there still seems to be so much violence. I mean, it's just like a, it's just a tough place. It's a dangerous, at that Bay area in general, especially you see all the videos coming out of SF of like all the stores being robbed and Walgreens having to close down and stuff because people, they're just letting people walk in and, and walk out with, with all the merchandise. And uh, yeah, I mean, that highway in particular has a lot of crime on it. So I think this one is a tough one. I can't like, it's hard to give it a, a any really new call to action other than like, man, that's uh, it's really unfortunate. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think that one of the difficult things, I'm not really trying to tell anybody how to live their life because, you know, ultimately everybody's just got to make the right reads based off the right information. So hopefully just the information's out there. I think a lot of times to be honest, especially even with Chinese people, man, we just hope that it's not us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the stats are there and Chinese people, they're not like a really violent population of people. I'm not saying they're not used to be gangs and stuff like that, but that's, mm -hmm. those get, days are long gone. And it's almost like, uh, they kind of like, I don't know, like there's some, it's too much acceptance. I think of maybe a little bit too much risk. You know what I mean? Like risk mm -hmm. ratios and percentages and you just look at, you know, everything's kind of mathematical. I think that there's a lot of acceptance that a lot of poor first generation immigrants are going to move into high crime areas, but you just hope that it's not you. Right. And uh, I think uh, that that's definitely um, unfortunate. I don't know. It's tragic. You know, I'm, I'm going to donate to the GoFundMe. Um, but I think that it's, it's crazy because it's almost like somebody's worst fear that they would speak out and people might chastise them mm -hmm. for saying that that story sounds so ridiculous and stereotypical. And then it goes and happens in real life. Well, you know, what's crazy is like, I, you know, there's always like someone who says like, oh, I don't take that way home or I don't go to that neighborhood because I don't want to get shot or I don't drive on that yeah. highway because I don't want to get shot. And like, it happened. That's the craziest thing is like, you think that person's crazy when they say that you're like, well, you're not going to get shot, man. Shut up. Like, what are you so scared about? Right, right, right. And then it happens. And I'm not saying everybody's going to get shot, but I'm just like, 
it kind of confirms that fear that people have. And it's like that, it sounds like an irrational fear at first. And then it happens and you're just like, damn, like people might want to avoid that highway for a while. Like, to be honest, if you can go around on the other side, take the San Francisco side, instead of going up, that's the 880 highway to Oakland from Fremont. Like that's like something that you might have to think about. I guess for me though, it's crazy because it's a little bit like America's like school shooting issue. Mm -hmm. You know how like it's almost built into the algorithm that a school shooting is probably going to take place two to four times a year in America, right? Obviously the scale and the intensity can vary depending on a number of factors, but like it's almost something that's like built into the algorithm at this point. And I always felt like, this is like, uh, hopefully it's not, I mean, I would encourage, like I said, everybody to, to if, you, if you see this, to try to reorient your, 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 any sort of social services or private organizations that you are in contact with, try to shift the, you know, resources to try to address this situational awareness issue. But it's almost like it's built in at this point, just like the school shootings are built in, into the American, like, Oh, no, man. It's so crazy. Like, you know, 30 kids can get shot up at a school in America and then no gun laws change. Like not even, it's not even. And and I would say the same thing is like, sometimes it feels like that for at least, um, I mean, maybe specifically like Chinese, the way Chinese move or do not move Uh, in and out of dangerous. uh, Last thing on the Jasper Wu thing. It's like, uh, you don't expect to get shot on the highway randomly. That's not a, that's not a neighborhood. That's not like a, cause you know, you're like, Oh, I see this neighborhood. It's kind of bad. I'm going to stay away. You're like, I'm on the highway. Like there's hundreds and thousands of cars on the highway with me. How do I get shot on the highway? This is like randomly, you know, by a straight Uh, bullet. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's very, very much a shame. And I will say this, uh, and this video is not about this, but the Jasper Wu death tragedy did not receive very much press. Uh, Obviously, had he been, you know, somebody viewed as more American or somebody viewed as somebody that everybody could relate to, media would have picked it up and Joe Rogan and Ben Shapiro would be using Mm -hmm. it as an example of why California is crumbling and all this and that, or it'd be used as a political Mm -hmm. point against the governor and whatever recall they're going to do part two or whatever. And it's like, it won't be used as political ammo because obviously outside of very specific, you know, the Asian American community, maybe even specifically the Chinese community, nobody cares. You know what I mean? So that's the unfortunate aspect of it, but I think that, you know, it is what it is. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, media is a lot like marketing. People, media, people don't understand media is a business. People need to pick up stories that they feel like are going to be sticky. And sticky on people means that you can uh, begin to extract monetization, whether that's through ad dollars or engagement or this and that, uh, gathering data for different selling the data and things like that. They don't feel like Jasper Wu is a good talking point to market to the rest of the country. It's not, it's not sticky. You know what I mean? So I think that that's the shame. And I think that that's why Asian Americans uh, do need to blast it out. Because obviously, if we're not going to have empathy for the poor, for newly arrived first generation immigrants, who is? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As much yeah. as we ask for our type of opacity and our humanity to mainstream America for like maybe our art pieces or maybe our movies or our shows or like, you know, our every community has its own unique plights. You know, we have to be ultra sensitive to the plight of the poor Asians. Yeah. No, I mean, if the educated and well-to-do Asians, the ones who made it can't even get people to see the poor immigrants, or if we don't even see them ourselves, then what did we really do in this country? Like really what impact did we make other than just do it for ourselves? Yeah. And other than try to essentially gain liquidity for consumer items and, you know, living a comfortable lives ourselves, which is still important. But beyond that, well, we there, didn't was, change no, the narrative. there we didn't. was no larger like ripple effect from our impact. Yeah. No, I, I, I do think there's some pressure on, on a lot of the, well, better organized. And, and I do think some I people, think so. you know, obviously, obviously Jasper Wu's uh, donation fund right now is a hundred K in it, which is good. And, um, you know, it's people with liquidity and I hope that not only do they, did they, do they donate, but they say that they donate. Yeah. Um, last but not least speaking of, you know, to your point of just like deaths that it just seems like something out of a movie, like fear mongering, but it really happened. There was a PhD student. I'm sorry. And what was his name? His name was Xiao Shung Dennis Zeng. Yeah. Xiao Shung Dennis Zeng shot in the chest 2 PM university of Chicago. Yeah, um, for a robbery, uh, it was crazy. I think there, 
It was not a stray bullet. It was a target. He got hit and uh, he died. And I see that a lot. From grad, I see a lot of grad students get yeah, killed from China uh, specifically. Um, I don't know why it's a lot more grad students than undergrads, but like it happened at USC several times. Mm -hmm. It happened at USC so much that they had, a, I think they opened up a 200 or $400 million fund just for international students because USC's like rep, international reputation for getting grad students Unfortunately, not that it was USC's fault, but like USC grad students from China getting killed was getting so many. Yeah. And if you're- It was, it was like entering like four or five. I think as some people might be wondering, like, why does it seem like everybody in all these stories is Chinese? Uh, I, Chinese make up the largest portion of Asians in America. They make up almost one out of every four Asians in America. It's the largest single slice yeah, of the Asian The largest single pie. slice. And there's a lot of- newly arrived immigrants always coming over. So we have a large population. A lot of them live in these metropolitan areas. A lot of them live in Oakland and New York, the Bay Area, California in general, right? Those are the Asian hotbeds. And uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of them are newly arrived immigrants. And so maybe just like they're not- are, They're just kind of here to do their thing yeah. too. I think that um, from what I've seen, and I think it's actually a good thing. I've seen like other Asians from smaller countries, they really stick together and they band together and they- you know, have this organization or that organization. They're very tight knit. Chinese are actually not like that. There are groups of Chinese, you know, maybe Wenzo or whatever here, they're Taiwanese. You might see that are tight knit, but for the most part, Chinese are not tight knit people. Like, it's kind of like, they're just like, hey, I'm just here to do my thing. And I just know who I know. There's not like, yeah. uh, not really big tight support uh -huh. systems when they come to this country. Yeah. They're just here to accomplish their mission. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't, and it's tough. So I don't want to, I'm not blaming anybody, but like, they're not, always tuned in to like how to move in America, which might help them avoid certain situations. You know, like it's not really their fault, but like, so it's not their fault because they're coming from an environment where really catching a straight yeah. bullet is, is almost like, um, yeah, it would never happened. Right. Or, so it's like, I just wish that there was a, a handbook that was written in the very simple language that people could like, it, it just got drilled into them before uh -huh. they came. Yeah. And I think that- In I, Japan, they actually do that. Yeah. They kind of have yeah. these like crazy, like YouTube videos. And, and let's be also. honest, let's be honest. A lot of the ideas like, hey, if I put my head down, nobody's going to mess with me. If I don't mess with other people, if I don't even engage with other people on the street, street people will not mess with me. And I'm saying like- um, There's some truth to that. There's like, it has you know, worked. We grew, we grew up in South Seattle. Like we've been in some uh, rougher neighborhoods at times growing up. And uh, there's some truth to it. Like don't, try to get in other people's business and live and let live. I mean, it works until it doesn't, right? And then when it doesn't work, it could easily be the worst case scenario. And I think maybe that's what happened. Like this grad student, think about it. He's a PhD grad student, educated. So this guy, he's an immigrant, but he's not like the low income immigrant that we're talking about. I'm not just yeah, saying he's like rich. An engineering student? Yeah, I'm not saying he's rich, but I'm saying he's educated, right? So he's here for at grad At school. least in PhD, a book sense. PhD, and, I'm, and this is goes for any... A uh, student that's going to a college campus that is kind of nearby a bad area because we know Chicago has a lot of problems, very, very high crime, highest maybe in the nation. And I'm saying like, if you're going to go to U of Chicago, just because you're a student, just because you, you know, uh, you have to think a lot about your safety. And I think that there does need to be a lot of conversation. I'm sure they are, but I'm saying like, uh, maybe even more because I know what happened to the USC grad student before um, he was a little bit off campus. Now that doesn't, no, he was out of what is considered a zone, protected zone, which is crazy because they have a protected zone at USC where they have people in like the yellow guards, jackets yeah. that are out there reporting stuff um, because the surrounding neighborhood is such high crime. And I'm like, okay, that's a really interesting situation. So if you get into one of those situations, if you're playing out, if you know somebody who's going to one of those schools, like, just have that conversation. I'm not saying you can stop things 100%. I'm just saying have the conversation. And, and I think the main key is uh, as a Asian American, and let's say, for example, you're educated, you went to college, and whether your parents did or did not, right? There's different types of immigrant waves. Um, I think you just have to take something away from it. And it can't just be like, how tragic. Like, my heart by, hurts. by all means, that's a valid response initially but i really think for me and this is what i'm trying to think of to do and i think we have to do a video andrew about like top 10 things or top 20 things the new immigrants should consider we might get it translated or something like that it, it motivates me to make some type of piece where i'm like how do we get cut to the core of this issue because if the outside environment is not going to change no matter how much you shout blue in the face in person or on the internet whatever platform you're talking about how what can we do to educate people yeah I think it's a good question. And uh, I think in general, 
there has to be uh like i said america is a very brutal country and you know a lot when, of upside a lot of yeah, downside yeah, that's when, the easiest way to put it you know it's like there's a lot put of it in financial terms there's, there's a, a lot, lot of, of upside there's a lot of downside it's a very volatile country i mean we have some of the best college we have the best colleges in the world we you can become a billionaire here you can uh pursue your dreams oh, you could start a business we much have, easier yeah. than most like not entertainment like countries. you can just run a chinese takeout spot and and send your kids to two kids to college from it you know what i mean like it's a great country but it comes with certain things and yeah, there's a lot of downside unless you mitigate and you understand how to you know yeah. mitigate the and then this is not just for immigrants it's just for asians in america it's just for anybody in america to be honest because just things happen to everybody we're not saying that these things only happen to asians but uh of course if asian immigrants make up a smaller population of this country and there seems to be like maybe a disproportional amount of these stories coming out we do have to look at it and kind of just ask some questions and be like okay what can we do what is missing is there anything you can do yeah and um you know we had actually contemplated about whether we wanted to make a podcast about this topic or not because i was like oh this is not really like something this you know this ain't a fun happy go lucky thing to talk about but at the end of the day Listen, guys, we want to step up to play. At least do what I can, you know, with a small thing that I can do is try to put it out and talk about it, make it okay for other people to have the discussion and spark the discourse because uh, these are difficult things to talk about. It's not necessarily happening to your exact type of Asian, Asian Americans, like almost trying to be accepted as like cool in America versus like first generation immigrants trying to avoid being killed in America. It's like a whole nother situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, like I said, you know, you may or may not know somebody that can learn from this, but I think that, you know, what I could do is encourage people. Like, if you have an organization, just think about that side, too. Can't just be about crazy rich Asians yeah. and movies and stuff like that. I, like, it, it really ain't about all about movies. Then The movie's not going to impact this. Yeah, I mean, I just think people will have to have the conversation more. I think that even if this doesn't touch that community immediately or directly, you know, each level of person, we all have the conversation. And it'll trickle down to the community that really needs to hear it, possibly uh, somehow. Yeah. So let us know in the comment section below, guys. I mean, just keep it constructive, and you know, we just try to think of solutions here. It's not about like being angry. I think there's other platforms to get angry on. Um, yeah. Please let us know in the comment section below. Share this with somebody you know. Let us know if you enjoyed this talk. I know it was a difficult thing to talk about. Um, you know, it wasn't to offend anybody on any side. I don't want to sound like we were like saying that any of these were preventable or anything like that. We have a lot of compassion for these incidents, but, you know, we just felt like we had to talk about it. Please let us know. Um, that was a hot pot boys in Texas. And, you know. Till next time, we out. Peace.